You may have found yourself wishing that you could learn a language but thinking that you're too busy, meaning that when you do have time, you're too tired, you feel too lazy and just have way too much stuff to worry about without adding the complication of a foreign language on top of it all. And to be honest, I'm exactly the same. I mean, look at all the stuff I have to do. I've got to go to the gym. I think it's closed today. I've got to do this jigsaw puzzle. Good job. I've got to take my kid to preschool. We're here. Get out. I've got to watch every Mr. Beast video. Thousands of sticks of real this is important and stuff. And I've got to say that this video is made possible by Surfshark. Where am I? More on that later. Right now I have to say Shana Chicos and talk about how to learn languages when you're feeling lazy. Because I've got to admit that at times I feel like language learning is too much for me. I'm very much an all-in kind of person, meaning that if I hear that basic fluency in Spanish takes 2,000 hours, I start to think, okay, that's about 12 hours a day for the next six months. Okay, when do we start? Meanwhile, the part of my brain that manages my family, my work, and my physical health is saying, um, what? And so I'm forced to reconsider my priorities. And while it's tempting to think maybe language learning just shouldn't factor in there at all because it takes a really long time and those things take up a lot of my time already, instead I decided to think about which of those things could complement each other. And here's the really good news, because while you may have been given the idea that language learning is this very deliberate act that requires you to sit and study the passive voice and verb conjugations in the second person imperative, my own experience says that all of this deliberate study plays a fairly minor role in truly learning a language. Even if doing deliberate focused study like that were faster, and there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it's not, it's not feasible that I could commit more than about 30 minutes a day towards that. Because it can't be done while I'm doing anything else. But what can be done while I'm doing something else is what's called acquiring a language. Acquiring a language basically means using your brain's natural ability to recognize and interpret patterns to slowly build a robust subconscious understanding of how the language works. This process is similar to how a large tree grows. That is, yes, it's a very long and intricate process, but no, it doesn't really require any outside intervention or even optimization. Your brain needs to hear the language just as the tree needs sunlight and water, but the rest will just kind of happen as long as you give it enough time. And so instead of choosing between things I have to do, like looking after my physical health, and things that I probably should do, like learning a language, I can choose to do both by, say, watching a TV series and a target language while lifting weights, or listening to an audiobook while running, and that's where this video's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, comes into play. It genuinely baffles me that there are language learners out there still not using a VPN. I would not have the level of Swedish that I do now if it weren't for Surfshark. In the time that I've been using it, Surfshark has paid for itself many times over. Because see all this amazing content that has helped me to learn Swedish is really entertaining and completely free? Looks great, doesn't it? But see this? That says, can only be viewed in Sweden. Well, guess what? Ja, i Sverige, baby. Ah. But my favorite thing specifically about Surfshark is that even at its very low price, one account is good for unlimited devices. And where that really works for me is in combination with my audio book provider which gives me access to amazing content in 11 languages. Now, I don't speak 11 languages, so I only listen to these three, but because I signed up for a Swedish account from Australia, it blocks a lot of books no matter what language they're in. But it all opens up instantly when I just use Surfshark to connect to Sweden, and because we can put it on unlimited devices, my family can listen to and watch whatever they want, I can listen to whatever I want in any language, and that number of devices starts adding up very quickly. For example, one of mine is this old smartphone that I don't use as a phone, I just use it as an audiobook player. So that's got Surfshark on it. You can put it on a tablet, a Fire TV stick, whatever you like, and you're not going to reach a device limit. And also, I know some people don't care about this, but personally, I love that Surfshark has a nice clean interface. It connects really quickly, and they're always adding handy features and new security features, which might not particularly interest the language learner in you, but are still very good ideas for anyone who's using the internet, and I believe that includes you. So yeah, Surfshark really is my personal recommendation. I've actually been wanting to work with them for a while because I've been using it for quite some time now. It's very affordable, particularly when you use the link in the description, which gives you the best price that they currently offer, plus three months for free, and it tells them that I sent you so that I can keep making these videos for you guys, and thanks to Surfshark for helping me to make this one. And this is where a lot of people, including myself in the past, start thinking that acquiring a language just sounds like magical homeopathic pixie dust that works about as well to learn a language as it would to 
cure a chest infection. The rational mind asks, if you're just watching a TV series or listening to an audiobook in a language you don't understand, surely it just sounds like random noises. How is that supposed to help? It is a very fair question, but it only applies for a very short time. Now let's skip past that short time for a minute and assume that you can understand 50% of the words used in a TV series that you're watching. Now, it's not going to sound like random noises anymore, is it? The problem that a lot of people have is to assume that that 50% is a distant goal that takes hundreds of hours of study. But for a lot of shows and movies, 50% would be accounted for by like two or three hundred words. And you can learn two or three hundred words in a week. And I know you might be thinking, what, so I'm just supposed to learn 300 words and then just start listening to a bunch of Dutch, Spanish, German, Finnish, French, Chinese, Lebanese, not a language, Polish, Czech, Swahili, Dutch? You said that one already. And then I'm just going to magically understand the language? Not magically, no. But slowly, yes. I don't want to be too prescriptive here because the details like how long it will take, how much focused study you should do, etc, etc, all vary depending on at least three factors. But in the end, the bulk of what you should be doing comes down to the same thing. All trees need water and sunlight. All language acquisition needs time spent in the language a lot of time. And I think that a lot of people don't give it enough time and therefore write it off as the magical pixie dust. Their rational mind says, if I spend an hour on Spanish vocab and grammar, then I know what I've learned in that hour. But whenever I try to listen to anything in Spanish at full speed, I can't understand anything at all, so I know that that's not working. So thanks, but I'll just keep doing the study. The rational mind rarely seems to go so far as to ask, so if you've been studying for 100 hours already and you haven't progressed at all in your comprehension, at what point will you comprehend everything perfectly? And obviously the answer is never because 10 million times zero is still zero. But if you spend an hour listening to Spanish, your comprehension at the end of that hour is better, right? Even if only a little bit. And now imagine you take that little bit and you multiply it by a thousand. Even if that little bit in the first hour was a very little bit, once you multiply it by a thousand, it's gotta be something, right? And that right there is acquisition. It's not magic, it's maths. A tree might take 20 years to grow from a seedling into something that looks like a tree, but that doesn't mean that it's not growing. And thankfully, language acquisition doesn't take that long, like as long as the tree. If you've spent even just a few hours consciously learning your target language, but you can't understand it when it's spoken at full speed, try listening to it, even if only passively, for 100 hours. That's just over an hour a day for three months. Now, does that sound like a big commitment to you? Because it doesn't to me. And until you've done at least that much, I don't think you've really given acquisition a chance. And remember, I'm not saying that you should never do anything else. I'm saying that listening to the language as it is really spoken should account for the bulk of your time spent in the language. Because not only is it the easiest thing you can do, it's also the most effective. And the best part is, now that I know I have to spend time listening to the language, I can get back to being a busy person and also learn languages. I can do this jigsaw puzzle. I can take my kid to preschool. I can go to the gym. And I can even watch Mr. Beast videos. Son muy buenos. Now I understand that I'm being very general in my recommendations because I do tend to get stuck in finicky details a lot. So I just wanted to make a video that explains very broadly what you're trying to do. If you want to see how I spent time in two very different ways when I first started learning Spanish, in this video right here, I learned the 1000 most common Spanish words in a single day. Now I know that sounds really stupid, but it's actually a really good video. And in this video right here, I watched the same film in Spanish 50 times in the space of two months. And that's also a really good video. I hope you enjoyed this one and until next time, lo quiero.